Minji, welcome to our little platform here. I'm so thankful to have you here today. I've so enjoyed just a little bit of back and forth in the conversation that we've had so far. So why don't you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about what you do? Thank you, Alison, for having me here. My name is Minji. I have a business to support uh, online educators, online teachers, to empower them with business skills mm -hmm. so teachers can manage their teaching business and teaching career actively. I grew up in China, then I moved to Hong Kong. In 2012, I came to the UK uh, to do a business degree, MBA degree with Cambridge University. When I graduated from Cambridge, I always have a passion for online learning and online education. So I decided to leave my business path and pursue a role in online education. Uh, two years ago, I set up business uh, specifically to help and support online ESL teachers. For teachers I support and serve, they typically have teaching background. They're really passionate about teaching and learning. They are great interacting with the students online. What I can help is trying to provide them with the business skills uh, that will help them to launch a successful teaching business. Organizing a teaching business is a little bit wider because uh, that involves skills to talk to a client, to recruit and onboard uh, a client, a customer, manage intercultural communications, manage marketing, which is very, very essential. A teacherpreneur, some people call that would need both teaching mindset and a business mindset to thrive in this path. I know you talked a little bit about more of a mindset shift that teachers need to make as we build our business. I think I would give a very concrete uh, example. So many teachers come and ask the question, uh, how do I recruit more students? Uh, how do I sell my classes? How do I sell my teaching package? We have the teacher mindset only. We will create a lesson and sell to customers, hoping that way we get more students. Having a business mindset, meaning seeing marketing quite differently, specifically in this case. Marketing is more than selling. Marketing is about bringing change to a very small number of people. For example, when I create a lesson, the most important thing to do, the first thing to do is actually not to sell, but contact a potential client saying, this is what I've created. Can I get your feedback? It's about constantly getting feedback every time we interact with a potential client. So we see the words as how they see the words. We have their word view and we help them to make change towards where do they want to go. That very important mindset switch. Yes. Get feedback, listen to our client and learn from our client. That was something that really resonated with me. And I love this because it was so much of, like you're saying, it's that mindset shift where instead of saying, um, I have this, like you said, and I want to sell it to you. Instead, it's saying, what, where are you having difficulty? How can I help you get to this point? Down there toward the, the middle and the bottom, you say, how much can we help them achieve their dreams or how much we can help them alleviate their pains. When we go shopping for anything, we're looking for something specific to help us, you know, whether it's a good shampoo <laughs> yes. or um, a car. We don't want to buy something that doesn't suit us just because it says I'm the best. I've got the most um, money invested in this. You know, I've been doing this the longest. It's because that particular product suits what our our pitch point is our pain is it will help us get to the next place that we want to be so this is why i love this so much you change the the mind shift and put it on the student instead of putting it on you what would be your top tips for anybody still trying to figure out this marketing business side of it tip number one is there is a term called deliberate practice teachers we were teaching before and suddenly we face this huge challenge of we need to learn how to market ourselves, talk to the customers directly, onboard them, keep them coming back, retain them, manage students, teacher relationships. We were starting from this circle and constantly getting out of the comfort zone. 
<laughs> it's normal for us to have setbacks. The term deliberate practice means if something is not working, just stop and reflect, experiment a new way. For example, uh, recently, in order to truly understand the journey, the path as an independent teacher, I also applied to be an out school teacher. I created a few classes teaching Chinese language. Of course, at the beginning, I have no booking. So I, I made a survey among teachers asking, what would you do in my case? A lot of teachers actually chose to create more classes. Very interesting. What I would like to communicate with teachers is, if something is not working, it would be good to stop to analyze the problem, try another way of doing things. If I applied for a teaching job, and the company didn't recruit me. Before I applied for one more job, I need to sit down, think through the process and do things next time a different way, just experiment. Every time, do a little bit of a tweak. Sometimes when it's working, it's like an aha moment. We will know, oh, this is the way to do it. So uh, tip number one is um, don't be disheartened if things don't work before doing more of it do it in a different way. Sometimes we get stuck because, well, this was my idea and I can't think of another way. I don't know what I could have done wrong. And you asked other teachers and they not only suggested things, but they suggested things that you went, wait, that's like the opposite of what I was going to do. So many of us, we are solo now. So what you said about getting feedbacks from peers, getting support from peers, that's just so essential. If things are working, let's celebrate together. If things aren't working, let's just ask each other, what would you do? Tip number two is do one thing at a time. This is something I constantly battle myself and I see other teachers struggling as well, especially when they started teaching business. I heard a lot from teachers who said they are burnt out. There are a lot of lesson planning, teaching, uh, administrative work. If this is such a long journey, maybe it's good to think it through oh this is the path I have to take instead of thinking a hundred things to do tomorrow think about what are urgent what has to be done today mm. next week and go from there do one thing at a time do it very properly it's like a domino eventually it will lead to our long-term success so that's tip number two and Rinji, I think that's why people like you are so valuable someone who does have the the business savvy and can kind of see further down the road than I can. What you do is so beneficial to, to help guide people like myself. The last tip um, that's actually quite often mentioned from other influencers as well, uh, a growth mindset. How do we see setbacks? How do we see failure? I started doing uh, my own business, creating my own business about five years ago. It's, it's not easy. I, I constantly felt I was chasing my clients at the beginning. I was disheartened a lot, a lot of times. What really helped me was talk to somebody who was supportive, uh, read a book about business, which helped me to grow my skill set, you know, keep on encouraging me. There's a million of times I want to give up. I thought this is too hard. Uh, I wasn't getting any responses. I, I lost confidence. Sometimes we run out of that inner resource. Find somebody else. It can be our family members, a very good friend, a mentor, a coach. Just with that little extra power, when we need it, it really, really help us to keep going. So purposely create a support network. Having these resources will be extremely important to keep us going. If a teacher was looking for help from you, what sort of services are you offering to that teacher and how would they contact you so that they can take advantage of those services? I have a website called improveyourbookings.com. That's the platform to support and empower teachers who want to enhance their business skills and launch their teaching business. There are two services available. One is a Udemy course. That's a self-paced pre-recorded video with assignment learning content. So teachers, they can take the course at their, their own pace. Uh, that course covers business strategy and pedagogy skills. The Udemy course is helping teachers to build a baseline. What are the essential steps what is an effective process in terms of strategy and how do we make a business plan? I have another service, which is on one-on-one -on -one coaching. Uh, these are for more long-term clients, for teachers who are going through this journey. 
when they run into specific challenges or difficulties, they can book a session with me. We can talk it through, work out weekly goals, monthly goals, so I can be in a way their cheerleader and consultant. The Ublimi course is a great way to start. And for uh, Alison, for your followers, I'd like to offer a discount code for them so people can get started. It's a small investment that's going to make a difference in the long-term future. When we finish the course, we start to take actions. We implement our process, our roadmap. Uh, when we would run into specific challenges and roadblocks, uh, the one-on-one -on -one coaching is there for teachers who start a journey would like to have a little bit of personalized guidance and support and cheerleading. So I'll just, I'll put that um, discount code down below in the yes. description box uh, for those who, who are interested. And I, I want to encourage people at the very, very least to go to her Udemy course and do check it out. And you work with a, um, a teacher on this course. So people have experts on both sides to um, give perspective on that. I just want to say, Alison, what you're doing is so timely because I know there are tens of thousands of online ESL teachers uh, with the particular situation in September, in the summer, in 2021, uh, a lot of the teachers, they lost the opportunity to work with huge platforms. Uh, however, I love how you approach it. You see it, of course, it's a challenge for everybody but it's also an opportunity. I don't know if you like gardening. I'm trying to grow a garden. It's like previously we got a garden of commodities. Everybody is delivering the same curriculum again and again, provided by the platforms. With the crisis, it's an opportunity for the garden to have all sorts of plantations and flowers and herbs and veggies. It's in the perfect avenue for teachers to figure out their specialization. Finally, teachers have this opportunity to create their own brand identity curriculum of course it takes time because it takes years for a garden to prosper but when that happens just think about it how beautiful it will be to have a garden with variety and diversity how exciting that picture is yes what a beautiful analogy that is uh, yes it's a beautiful picture but before gardening let's just invest a little bit of a time and a little bit of resource to learn how to be a good gardener. This is uh, what the Udemy course is for. This is what one-on-one -on -one coaching is for. When we have the expertise, when we have the skills, when we understand what is an effective process, we will do things much better. So that's the last takeaway for your audience. That is a great takeaway too, because I... Um... Again, I've been there, even with the garden, I've been there. And I know in my impatience, I just wanted to put things in the ground and have them bloom and be beautiful. And it, and it doesn't work that way. So again, thank you for being such a great resource. And I will definitely put down the links to your courses, to your website, and just look forward to getting to talk to you again in the near future, I hope. Bye.